Hello, humans, and welcome to what the first of many, hopefully, of the uh, specialty series. Um, what I've said numerous times in the podcast is that you kind of want to look at collectors and people who are actually passionate about selling their products um, and kind of uh, using those videos to kind of like, you know, build your knowledge and all those different things. So today oh, we're, we're going to be talking about Skylanders, you know, heaven forbid. <laughs> and I have Sarah here from Flip Fox Fine. So that's that's probably the first time they've actually mentioned to say it properly because, you know, it's a tongue twister. Um, <laughs> with, further ad, with further ado, uh, how are you, Sarah? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad for an octopus. It's quite wet down here in the Bermuda Triangle, so it's yeah. always good to see. But, yeah. Yes. But, um. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> that's right. So I suppose before we get too far into it, tell me a little bit about yourself. So what, what are you doing? What am I doing? I'm trying to make the mm. money. That's what I'm trying to do. Oh, that's, um, that's always a plus. <laughs> so, yes, I uh, focus on my little plastic characters, um, being Skylanders and Lego Dimensions, Disney Infinity. But um, as you know, the market with Christmas, it's, tinkering up now so I also do clothes selling which I'm thrilled about but um yeah I'm up here in Newcastle and that's my my little business I've got going for about two and a half years now well that's good and what, what got you into it Skylanders in the first place uh yeah so I'm a gamer my whole family's a gamers and um I kind of missed the boat the toys to life thing uh I was a pc gamer so I didn't really get the console thing and uh hubby's friend gave him a whole heap of plastic figures as my dad calls them and we took them down Christmas in Canberra and going through them and pricing them up to see what the hell I even had and uh that kicked my start of my uh business because it turns out they're worth a lot of money yeah that's right well they they were worth a lot of money well they were <laughs> good, but they were when I started they were really good COVID times yes. Yeah, so like what Sarah's just alluded to, I, f I first started in Skylanders around about 2020, 21 as well. Um, yeah. and, and the market was just booming because we, you know, we were in that quarantine period and all those different things. And, you know, a lot of characters, you, you were looking at $100 plus and they're quite plentiful back then. And that's what I found as well is that yeah. not many people knew about Skylanders. Definitely the, the thrift stores or the op shops didn't know about Skylanders and all these different things. But the market... I think it's kind of skewed to the the other side now is that everyone knows about Skylanders. They're trying to get the top dollar, but they're not worth anything. So <laughs> it's kind of skewed yeah. to the to the other side. But um, but that, that, that's it's enough about it. Oh, that's right. Like it's a bit of a hunt, and you know, as much as I hate using the word bolo or you know, telling people what to find, is that Skylanders are pretty plentiful, and the the rarer characters. You know, I don't know about you, Sarah, but they pop up all the time. Yeah, you know, like they're not. You know that. Some of the characters that we'll be discussing today, you will probably see them on multiple occasions through the year. I'm not going to say you'll see them daily or weekly, but you know, if you look at Facebook Marketplace, you look at through the thrift stores, or you look at you know, even through your kids' collection if they're into Skylanders, you'll probably notice a couple at once. So, no, that's, yeah, that's good. But um, before we get further, we'll have to appease to all the uh, the Skylander portal master freaks that we do have on Reddit, <laughs> which uh, all <laughs> transparency, I'll, I'll class myself as one. Well. What's, what's your favorite Skylander? No, I like my imaginators. I got this one recently, and I was testing him out. And he was fun, Blastertron. He's cool. Blastertron, yep, yeah. But um, I'm I'm more of a the dark. It's like so, like Nightmare, and uh, they're mm. cool when you're playing with them. The effects and that that they have. So, but I yeah. think um, I'm a big fan of Trap Team. Yeah, so Trap Team. Yeah, I, I suppose my Trap Team would be one of my favourite lines to sell. And Imaginators, what you you said as well. But I don't know. I, I'm not more of a gamer. I'm more of a a collector i suppose that i like presenting the skylanders and i like you know like that display aesthetic that they have and i think yeah. that's where skylanders kind of have that appeal for both sides so you know people collect the figures as you know for display pieces and also they collect them to play in the game as well so yeah i like grinding you, you them out that. for levels and that <laughs> yeah so you got you got multiple levels of what you can you know you can do with your skylanders but for me i'd have to go washbuckler which is like a little octopus and swap for so <laughs> Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. There's but, not a fox one, yeah. I think, so. No, I haven't come across a fox one. But no, I'd really um, imagine it. It's probably Payneta would be my favourite one, like just like just the display version. I've never played with him. so He is pretty. Um, yeah, he's, he's kind of like, you know, yeah, a little, you know, I suppose a little 
fluffy yeti <laughs> like pinata like, that's what he is he's a pinata he's like that llama from Fortnite. he's just like brightly yeah. colored yeah but, he's quite a, but I, like like i said i've never really played skylanders in the sense that i've always just liked displaying the characters because they are quite well made and they're quite you know aesthetically yeah. pleased quite little collect yeah. the people so um and before we we go too far into it as well sarah is that do you find that out of box skylanders don't really have that much of a a depreciation of coast like new inbox ones. I always find that, you know, that people kind of I've expect s- that Scott will be out of box. So Yeah, I've sold a lot of inbox ones and they don't really go for much more than if they were already unboxed and got a bit of cosmetic damage to them. That's right. Yeah, and that's that's something like, you know, especially Nintendo Amiibos where they are primarily what I see from a collector's standpoint, they'll actually keep them in boxes and the yeah, yeah the, the price between yeah, in box or loose is where the character's by itself yeah. um, is quite drastic but with skylanders uh, unless you've got a super rare you know a rare one the um, flocked and, ones yeah, or something yeah, yeah. um the, the characters aren't that it's quite you know like for example i've got a um a three pack of superchargers which is like the car racing skylanders from what i can gather i, I can't sell the new one box one for the same price as i've got them out of box <laughs> yeah. and so, yeah. someone someone just take it i'm in two minds whether just rip them out of box and sell them loose i've know, done that i've box. done that multiple times to just taken them out of the box and i've sold them out of box more so than in box so yeah yeah so I suppose that's our first takeaway for the lesson is that, you know, if Skylanders doesn't really matter if they're in box or out of box, they'll, they'll still fetch the probably, you know. Someone wants I've, it, they'll I'll put it, it this way. Well, that's right. I've never come across a Skylander that's rare enough to warrant a box. Like, you know, no, the, you know the, the, the figures we were mentioning a bit earlier that, you know, go for over $100 or probably upwards of 70 or 80 90 dollars now because you know the market started a little bit yeah. um they've always been out of box yeah you know, so i've you know the characters and you know like what sarah and i were discussing before we went live is that um you know a lot of the skylanders go to america or they go to the european market so you know we would you find that did you, would you say that we had a few exclusives or we had a lot more that were I suppose prevalent in Australia. Definitely. Is that... It appears that we in Australia got released more like light calls and certain figures that we can go through later, um, like Sunburn, for example, which I think is Spiros. Mm. But that always, if I sold it individually, it always went over to Canada or the US. But I couldn't sell yeah. it here in Australia. And, and I found the same with Scratch that, like, you know, yeah, and we, Scratch, we, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit later as well is that eBay, um, eBay, arbitrage or i suppose that you retail arbitrage or whatever you want to call it is quite good because a lot of people might sell their skylanders locally you know quite cheap because they can't move them um yeah. but then you can you know obviously poach that and sell it overseas but like we said you need to know which characters you're after so don't just don't go buy <laughs> bundles and bundles of them because yeah. you'll um you'll get tripped up but i suppose we we better talk a little bit what skylanders are before we go further into it sarah so um I suppose from my understanding is that you, we'll talk about before you said about Spyro's Adventures, the first one that came out in the in the line that came out what fourteen years ago, so what, probably about two thousand. Yeah, about two thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that, that comprised about I think twenty five to thirty five Skylanders initially, which were just the base characters. They're just like little little plastic figurine that went onto like a, a portal, which plugged into your um your Wii or your. There we go. There's one prepared earlier. Um, that one is called Shell. It's a shell shock, is it? Wham shell. Wham uh, <laughs> Showing how uh, fascinated I am by them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so they, they used to plug into you know, your gaming console and yeah, you plug onto the bottom of that. So, and what Sarah's got there is actually the Skylander Spires Adventure. You can tell by the green base. That's something I want to touch base as well. So, the, the different different games had different base colors, right? So, your first one would have the green, your Skylander Giants, which was the second in the category with the orange ones. Yeah. Um, so then you yeah there we go um so then you moved up to your swap force which is the blue ones and they're the ones that are either little miniature figures like that or the ones that you can actually pull apart as well so they come those different things so that's a jade kraken i've never had one of those myself or completed yeah. one but i had half of them <laughs> yes yeah, so um, i get a lot of halves yeah so but what what it is as well is that with the swap force ones that Sarah just picked up then is actually interchangeable so that character could you know swap with someone else and plug in and ha- create a brand new character so when I get halves of those, I normally just put them in a bucket and then just you'll eventually just come across the other half. Um, yeah. Or alternatively, yeah, you could sell them as mix and match pieces, just a little bit cheaper yeah. and, and all those sort of things. Because they, they do have rarer parts and rarer pieces that, um, and a lot. Like, yeah, and that's a standard one there. Um, yeah. From there, you move on to my beloved trap team, which is the red base. 
calling her out now. There we go. Oh, look, there we go. It's a trap master. So these ones had like a, um, a bigger figure, which that one there is called trap master. It's a Christmas variant. So there's a different variants of them. Uh, and that's a little one. So it's basically, I can't remember what they're called. The mini. So the, what were the mini He's ones? That's right. So the, spry. He's mini spry. Yeah. So it's a mini spyro from the first series. Um, so, but then you'd have like an intermediate character. Like that's the mirror of magic or mystery or whatever yeah. it is. So you'd have all these different like, um, pieces building pieces and all these different things so trap team and imaginators are the the bigger ones and that's a trap there um and also superchargers which fell between um oh, i've never had the the hawk um that's right so basically trapped uh sorry superchargers had a crossover with nintendo for the wii and the wii u so they brought out these only brought work out the Kong. nintendo ones only work on the nintendo versions on the nintendo. of the game that's right and they also so have the dark variant, well. which goes for a little bit of money. But yeah, so they're, they're, they're interchangeable between Amiibos and Skylanders as well. So you can use them for Mario, or you can use them for um, your Skylanders game. But like Sarah said, it was only on the Nintendo that they worked for. And finally, and lastly, uh, we have Skylanders Imaginators, which is yeah, this is the big ticket item, right? <laughs> so these are the ones you want to look for. So what Sarah's got there, she's got a Skylander Imaginator Sensei, which is Blastertron on the right or yep. her left. <laughs> Whatever. And, and they, well, that's right. And the Magic Crystal as well. So basically the Magic Crystal is, and we'll, we'll be talking a little bit about them later. Um, they're kind of, a, they'll design as a one-use product um, by Activision. So you'd basically pay $10, $15 or how much they were at retail, put your character on there, and it would lock it to that crystal. So if you sell that on... Yeah, if you pick them up for Facebook Marketplace or you pick them up through the, the thrift store, wherever you pick them up from, more often than not, you'll actually have a character built into that. And I'm actually in the process of building a video to actually show you how to wipe those. Um, Sarah might have a bit of a different opinion to me, but I find that if I wipe the characters, the crystals go a lot quicker. Um, do you find that or do they go pretty quick for you as well? They sell quick for me too. I've only got yeah, okay. a handful left and I don't like them. Yeah, so I, I tend to wipe them because it's quite an easy process and what I will talk about in the video as well. But it, it's really much for muchness. And the reason why I wipe them for is because I get every man and their dog write me a message saying, hey, is this wiped or is this clean crystal or something along lines oh, of that. interesting because so just... I've never had one of those messages. So yeah. there you go. Well, I, I even sold a... You must um, have a standard. Well, uh, yeah, I, I've just had... Yeah, like I said, I, I just use a template from my Skyland the same that I've tested them personally. And yeah, I... I yeah, you know, I use um, Skylanders, Imaginators, or Trap Team just to you know to test the different ones because they're all back compatible. So, um, what I would suggest, you know, like if you're looking into getting to, into Skylanders, I suppose is to, you know, and if you want to, you know, Sarah might have a differing opinion of this, but this is my stance: is that buy yourself a cheap Nintendo Wii, um, get a copy of Skylander Giants, and probably a copy of Skylander. Oh, what would you say, Imaginators or Trap Team? They're pretty cheap on the Wii. Um, uh Imaginators didn't come out on Wii, I don't think. I oh, didn't. Oh, that's right. You didn't either. I've been mean, so well. Get we'll get a copy of Trap Team. <laughs> Trap Team, yeah. Yeah. So get a copy of Trap Team. Get a copy of Skyland and Giants. Um, then just get a um, a portal, which I you know uh, prepared earlier. So this is the uh, the portal that came out with Skylanders Superchargers, and it's got the little trap spot up the top, which your little trap can go into. Um, and this one was actually compatible with all the Skylanders. So the the Skylanders each had a different portal um, with each series that they brought out. But because Superchargers were the second to the last one, and the Imaginators by that time, I think from what I can gather is that the the product was dying off because it had com competition yeah, from yeah. Disney Infinity, had competition yeah. from Nintendo Amiibos and all these different things, plus, you know, Lego Dimensions. So, yeah. you know, Lego... Uh, sorry, there we go. <laughs> I got confused there. So Skyland Imaginators didn't even release the full set because, you know, that the just loss of interest because it got to the point where they were releasing a game every year, kind of like Call of Duty or, you know, like a sporting game and all those different yeah. things. And parents couldn't keep up or that the kids would lose interest because of the, you know, the amount of, it was almost the original pay to play kind of thing where, where yeah. games favor microtransactions now, which is instant. Skylanders would, you know, involve you going to the shop, picking up a character or, you know, over a different element or these different things to progress in that game. So when you, when you buy the game off the shelf, you might be only able to play 20% of the game. You could finish the game, but you couldn't access everything in the game. You needed yeah, all the different characters and all those different things. Yeah. Um, which you know, obviously annoyed a lot of people in the line as well. So that's something that's something that we need to be do all those different things. But what I'll do, Sarah, is I'll go back to 
to um, Spyro's adventure. <laughs> so, Good old, um, all the game. well, that's right. So this is Spyro's adventure, right? So basically, my understanding is that there's five or six elements. Is that correct from your stance? Eight. I, I can't think. Eight is there? Like, is that eight. from Spyro's adventure, or is oh, okay? Yeah. I'll keep. Is that about eight? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> they, 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 look at that. I, I don't. I don't play it. So <laughs> I, I just. I just you know, collect the figures. Um, so, but what what happens is that. Like, you know, what I do, and I think Sarah does as well, is that we actually bundle the Skylanders into elements, you know, all those different yeah. things. So, like we were talking about before, is that we use a website, and here's one I prepared earlier. Um, so, this is a Skylanders uh, character identification website, and I will put it in, the, in the, the description below. So, what happens, you can actually go to the identification button at the top, then click by your game and actually work out what it is. Um, like we were saying before, is that you know looking at the different color bases, what will tell you which kind of game you've got. Um, so the Giants, which is the one we're looking at here, is that it's got the orange base, and then you can work out from there. And obviously, like Swap Force, and I will put in the description what color bases they are as well. So it just gives you a little bit of an easy, easier work around. So you can actually work out what character you've got, um, yeah. and I find that a lot easier to use than to um, to use, I suppose, Google Lens because it Let, just, yeah. it's a bit of a pain. Just go to that website. Yeah. yeah. That website's fantastic. And, you know, you can work – like, there's no easy way, I suppose, to work out how much the figure's worth. Um, like, nope. you know, you just literally research. have to research, research, research. And, that, and that's something to do. But like, I would go far as to say if it's um, – and, you know, I don't know if Sarah feels about the same about this, but if it's not the, the Imaginators – can you just hold up the Imaginator again for me? Sorry, Sarah. Uh, just show me the base. Yeah, so the base on – it's more like kind of a – I won't say a triangle, but <laughs> like a diamond Whatever shape with a black base. And that yeah. little circle there, you can't really see, but that's actually the element of the – so it's a light element, is it? That's a light. Yeah, a so light. the light yeah. and dark didn't come in until uh, Superchargers. Yeah. Oh, no, it was um, Trap Team. Because well, you had Nightmare and – Yeah, uh, Trap Team and then Superchargers, yeah. 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 So, yeah, so that's really weird that – yeah, you know, I thought it would have been a tech element team with <laughs> being a robot. No, but, no that hey, was around well, the place. Yeah, so what, what can I say? Um, but yeah, so but like I was saying, is that that's the Skylander Imaginators, which has got that diamond base, and also the yeah. the, um, the Skylanders Trap Team, which has got the red base. Yeah. Um, yeah, my my trusty <laughs> attendant there with the you know with the hands that can yeah, you know, so opposable thumbs will go a lot lot better than they do. So, <laughs> and that's, that's a water level. Yeah. So if they're not, but you can like also tell from red, this part here. What's well, right? Yeah. So on that one, that's right. And all the figures up to, I think, up to um, superchargers had kind of what they're told on yeah, the base. Yeah, superchargers have got fire still for yeah. being fire. Yeah, but well, I think that's really they, they they kind of cut it away with superchargers. Um, but but like I was saying before, is that if it's not a super a Skylanders Imaginator, so that black base with the, the diamond shape, or you know the red base, which is Skylanders Trap Team, or you know Trap Team accessories, I kind of would steer away from it unless you know that the, the category back to front, because you know yeah. your Skylanders Spiral's Adventure, so your first series, your Skylander Giants, which is your second series, yeah. are complete trash. Yeah, out yeah. of maybe like yeah, you a know, hundred Skylanders out of those series, maybe one would be worth ten, fifteen dollars. Yeah, um, not many. Yeah, so Sarah and I were talking about before we went live. Um, I probably wouldn't pay more than ten to fifteen cents for a, for a Skylander um, in those series. So yeah, you know, for your Spyro's Adventure, which is the green base, um, and also the, the Giants, because we're, we're kind of kidding around before is that we've got tubs and tubs and tubs of the you know, the Giants. We can't get rid of them. <laughs> um, and and yeah, you know, like you can always tell. Yeah, you know, I suppose sourcing as well is that if you see especially on Facebook Marketplace, or you can see, um, you know, the thrift stores and all those different places or all those different things. If you see a predominant, you know, a lot of green and a lot of orange, there's a good chance that that person's actually been through that and, you know, picked out all the good characters Charity. and all those different things. Yeah. Um, and that, that's right. So, yeah, obviously the only orange thing you should be looking for is the octopus. But other than that, uh, if it's Skyland, just throw it away. But, yeah, so, yeah. Look, yeah, so... I would like, you know, like I was saying, if you're looking to get into the category, I probably would steer away from, you know, I'd probably just pop in. It's probably that swap force, you know, the blue base ones. Yeah. Um, they they used to be a lot more lucrative than they were they are now. They they've dropped right off. That's a life one from memory. It's a this is a zoom. legendary one, and I can't can't move it. Like it's worth money, yeah. but so, no one wants it. No, that's right. So like Skyline is swap force. Like I. 
if, if I was going to be brutally honest, you know, if it's not red or if it's not that black diamond place, um, don't leave them. So that's that's a jade kraken, which is also a variance. They've all got different variants, right? So, yeah. you know, um, the normal ones are like red and orange or orange and yellow from memory. Yeah. Um, so these are the ones, yeah, all those different things. But I probably would just focus on the on the trap team and the safe bet to make you to start off. Yeah, that, that's right. And yeah, and we still find them fairly fairly often on Facebook Marketplace and all through, in the thrift store as well. That um, yeah, and the best place to get them for is that you know if you go through the person's you know Facebook Marketplace profile and then yeah, not to stalk them, but you can actually see what else they're selling as well. So they're actually. Looks like they've got like a fair few listings, or they've got a rating of four hundred and eighty-six. There's probably a good chance that they've already cherry picked out the good ones, right? So, but if they're, you know, if they've got like a, a seller rating of three and they're just selling stuff around the house, or they mentioned they're saying, "Hey, look, I'm just selling my son's collection or my daughter's collection yeah. or something like that," they're the ones that come up fairly frequently. I'm not going to say that, you know, they're a regular occurrence, but you do see them fairly often. Um, and I've, I've, you know, profited, you know, phenomenal amounts of money on those collections, whether. They, they don't know what they're worth. You know, they, they may let, you know, probably 200 Skylanders go for about, what, maybe $50, $60 or something along the lines of that. Yeah, um, it depends because some think they do know what they're worth and price them hmm. ridiculously high as well because they comped a handful on eBay and assumed they all were worth that. Yeah, and then that's what Sarah and I were talking about before is that down in Canberra at the moment, someone's selling a bunch of Skylanders what I would probably say would be conservatively about fifty or sixty dollars worth of Skylanders because it's just like I was saying, it looks like the cherry picked crap <laughs> that they've left over, right? So, and they want three hundred dollars for it, and which they'll just languish on, you know, on on Facebook Marketplace for open a day because no one's going to go after them. Um, yeah. But on the flip side, is I um, there's a small country town next to Canberra that I picked up um, some Skylanders from last year. And I think I paid two hundred dollars for eight full tubs of them, and I had like every rare character you can imagine in there. So I had like the rare traps, which is you know the the three traps. I think they're only released in Australia. Is that correct, Sarah? Correct. Like the the yeah. yawn traps. Yeah. yeah. So the yawn traps, um, we don't have them because the, as soon as you get them, they sell for lucrative amount of money. So mm -hmm. I paid two hundred dollars for three. Uh, sorry, six tubs of Skylanders. That one trap came back for four hundred dollars. Um, and that was probably towards the, the height of the market. So, like I said, that one little bit of plastic. Do you have a trap there, do you, Sarah? I Yeah, so that that's very similar to what it is. It's it's not that one, but very it's like, similar shape. It's got it's almost like a, a sunflower. Yeah, it's more like a sunflower, just like an oblong Screaming sunflower. Round face. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the size of it. So that little bit of plastic brought in about four hundred dollars. So Incredible. you know they're very, very, very rare. So I've sold you know probably thousands and thousands of Skylanders, and I've come. I've only had two. one. <laughs> I've never come across the light one. So one day I will. Yeah. Um, so these are the ones you want to look out for, right? So tra traps, generally speaking, do well. Um, not all yeah. the traps are you know created equally. There are some that come across. Um, you know, like they're quite profitable, like the um, the light rocket and all those different things, and the magic yeah. rocket and all those different ones. Yeah, the, ones that look the a bit light and dark ones sell well. Yeah, so you've got a dark one. So there's two, or oh, sorry, there's one dark one as far as I'm aware, which is a spider. The spider. Um, then there's two light ones, I think. So there's a light rocket and oh. the light yawn. I'm not too yes. sure if there's more than that. Um, uh, like there is, there's the eagle one that I can't think of the name of. Oh, okay. So there's, Rock, and there's an eagle one as well, I think. Yeah. But yeah, but with the with the exception of probably life and water of <laughs> the traps. Not, yeah. Um yeah, so they're plentiful, the, the life and water ones. And what they're what they're basically here to do, the light the traps, um, they're more of an in-game element, so they catch the villain and you can play as the villain for a short amount of time. So unless they're the, the really rare ones, like I was saying, that that sunflower looking one, the yawn one, which we sold for four hundred dollars. Um they probably would be collection pieces, so someone would collect them because they are quite rare. But generally speaking, the the traps themselves are more for a person that's going to play the game. That's what it's I find anyway. So. Um, and yeah, you know, and like Sarah might be able to test as well. But I think the traps can be overridden. Is that right? Like yes. you can actually yeah. overwrite. Yeah. So you don't need yeah, to factory so on that website. Traps. Um, if you go into the traps, it will tell you what each trap can actually capture, and some traps can capture the same villain. So. You don't mm. need to have all of them. You can catch multiple mm. villains but with you, the one. Trap. But you can you can override you can override the villain yes. in the trap there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it's not like the 
Yeah, that's right. So it's not like the creation crystal where it's locked when you catch one villain and all those different things. But like the video that I keep alluding to that will actually show you how to reset the cre creation crystals, which is that little crystal that we're talking about, and also the traps for you as well is that um, that's a creation crystal. Yeah, so I'll tell you how to reset those. A lot of people know how to do it, um, and a lot of the people that buy them off you will know how to do it. But like I said, I'll get messages is probably primarily from end users you know like a mum or a dad just wanting to to make sure it's you know that little johnny can have his crystal and put whatever character he wants in there so it takes me about if i've got a i haven't said this to sarah but i'd only bundle them up in the sense that if i've got like maybe 15 or 20 crystals or if i picked up a big lot with a lot of crystals in it i'll just set probably 10 minutes aside and just do probably 30 or 40 it literally takes two seconds to do once you've set it all up um and uh, much, you know, well, I was quite surprised. I thought this was, you know, common knowledge. But if you've got Skylanders on the Wii, um, sorry, Skylander Giants on the Wii, the, the disc Giants, you can actually reset the crystals and you can reset the traps from that. But you can only use it for the Wii version. So that's why I was suggesting if you're, if you're getting into Skylanders to sell um, and you're looking at probably making it an ongoing occurrence, yeah, don't, don't go out and run out and buy a Nintendo Wii <laughs> and all the different things. If you come across one one lot of Skylanders, you're probably not going to come across them as well. But, you know, these are the things that you probably need to look at if you're looking at probably turning into long term. But I think from – do you think Skylanders are going to be a longevity kind of thing, Sarah, or do you, are you getting sicker than yourself? Or um, I, I get excited when I get them, but I also know they're not worth what they used to be. And um, the age of them with the QR chips and that, you know, the NFC chips inside them, they're going to die. So yeah. eventually they will cark it. So it's important to test what you're selling. Hmm. Yeah. And and that's like you, you said you're using a Samsung phone. That's news to me. I never knew about that. Apparently there's an app on there that checks the NFC chips. Okay. Yeah, NFC um, tools. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll grab that off you and I'll put that in the description below as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I think what I find is that, you know, like I said, from, primarily from my perspective is I collect the characters just for display and all those sort of things. So, yeah, there may be people that want to do that in the future, you know, just try to relive their childhood and all those different things. Um, but what we're discussing with the NFC chips is that they're supposed to have like a shelf life of 10 years on them, right? So the green ones, which are the first series, what do we say about 14 years old now so they're yeah, probably they're, they're probably towards the end of their life um yeah that's not to say that they they're all dead i haven't i haven't I heard haven't of any, mass, any dead ones I, I haven't come across any dead ones or nor like because I, I i'm and like i've said before is join groups that specialize in these things so i'm on you know the sky letters reddit and also the facebook pages as well and i haven't seen i suppose anywhere yeah you know, all the different climates and all these different things mentioning that there's it like a mess death rate of of the no. uh the, the chips and stuff along this so yeah they could go for 20 30 50 years all those different things it's just that i think the the manufacturer's shelf life was 10 years but that's probably a bit on the conservative side but yeah that's something you want to be mindful of um but like what we were discussing also as well is that skylanders are probably geared towards that 7 to 12 age bracket i think you yeah. probably you, you kind of yeah. refer to that too um so the you know you know just say 12 years um when they first came out 14 years ago, they're looking at about 26 year olds now. So they are probably moving into that realm where people have a little bit of disposable income, fingers crossed, yeah. um, where they probably want to go back and build their collection from scratch and all those different things. Yeah. So I do think that we probably will see ebbs and flows and spikes and skylanders. I know a lot of people in the Reddit community are, um, for lack of a better term, they're, they're wanting Activision to bring in another Skylander game so they can reuse their characters. I kind of think, what's your thought on that, Sarah? I don't think it'll happen personally. But. I don't think so because of microtransactions in game. They'll just be all digital characters and not physical ones. Well, that, that's that's exactly right. And that's by all the cosmetics in game and all that. So if they're going to do it, it will be microtransactions and not physical. That's right. That, that, that's 100% exactly what I was going to say is that, you know, that especially Activision and EA and all those different games, they've moved to, you know, in-game transactions where, yeah. you know, like Fortnite and all those different ones where you actually buy the character skins and all those different things. And it's yeah. it would be ludicrously ex expensive for Activision to, you know, production production ramp up, you know, the figurines and all those different things. It won't happen. Um, it won't happen. Like, they might create, like, a, a nod, all those different things. Or I'd be quite surprised if they didn't bring out a... Um, 
yeah, Skylanders HD remaster and possibly bring out a portal. You could have an attachment, then you can also buy the microtransactions in, in game as well. So, well, with everything going discless now, like the idea of having a physical portal and that as well will go yeah. out the window. So, well, that's, that's right. Like, you know, it's going to get to the point, you know, you, your consoles probably won't even have USB ports. So, <laughs> you know, like you just have to charge them through, you know, through something else or even batteries or something along to that. But, um, yeah, no, but like, I personally don't see it happening either because, like you said there, with the microtransactions. But I think we will probably see ebbs and flows in popularity for Skylanders over the years. Like, yeah, you know, like with when I suppose, yeah, you know, maybe 30 to 35, when people reach that age, they probably want to go back and revisit, revisit their childhood and all those different things. And they may start wanting to buy a Skylanders because the different versions came out over the years. Yeah. Uh, you might find, you know, certain series spike up and all those different things. Do I think that Skylanders, you know, Spyro, the green base one and the orange base ones will ever get popularity? <laughs> no, no, don't don't buy them at all. Um, no. But like we were saying, if you're looking at making a quick buck, look for the, the red ones and the, the Skylander yeah. Imaginators, which is the black one. Um, but what we'll, we'll talk is a little bit of it as well, Sarah, is that um, what is the best way for you to sell them? Do you normally bundle them up? Well, I think we did mention that earlier. Yeah, I used to be, you know, sell them individually um, at the peak of COVID. Now bundles, bundles, bundles. I'll list some individually, like for the Giants, for example, like there's a standard one mm -hmm. and there's variants. And the variants yeah. do go for more than the standard ones. But generally speaking, bundles. And I try mm. and keep them under the 500 grams as well so shipping doesn't kill the customer on their end. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's something that I do as well is that the Giants are quite considerably heavy compared to the other characters. So are the Trap Masters. Like the, the Imaginators, they look big and bulky, but they're quite light. They, like they must be hollow or something inside. Uh, or made Some are pretty delicate poster. as well, so... Yeah, so I normally, with the Giants, I either make it, there's a couple there that are actually really beefy, so they're probably about 200, 300 grams by themselves. Like Tree so, Rex. Yeah, yeah, Tree Rex or our beloved Thumpback. So um, <laughs> so he's, he's yeah, don't buy Tree Rex, you'll have a, you'll have a bucket no, of No, buy Tree there. Rex, Tree Rex is great. <laughs> so I don't, I don't have one on me at the moment. I don't um, have one, I'm out of them actually. Well, oh, hang on, no, here's one behind me. So if you look behind me. That one at the back, that one with his little hand sticking out with his little ears. That's Tree Rex. He's the mascot. There. He was the mascot of Giants. Yeah, and he's also he came with the 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 starter set as well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he, he was a starter. Yeah, and I, and I suppose that that's something you need to be mindful as well is that you know you will see yeah you know, especially if you buy them on a regular occurrence or a regular basis is you'll start seeing the same Skylander over and over and over again. And there's a reason behind that because that's actually what came with the, the, the game pack where you did and they're virtually yeah. worthless. Yeah, like I probably you know if, for oh, tree Rex as much as we Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's exactly right. I was about to say if if I came across a tree Rex, I wouldn't be worth more than five cents. Um yeah, a, I, lot, I even actually, got to the, a lot of worth yeah. like five cents. Mm. So th there's no there's no money in a lot of them um so what i normally do with tree rex right is i if i've got the space in the box i'll actually throw one of those in um it's just as a bonus <laughs> just of a you know trying to entice some positive feedback but it's almost like just a that little bit little bit of extra because um and like we said before is all the skylanders are backwards compatible up to that series so yeah you can't play um you know trap team on skyland giants but you can play giants on trap team for example so you can work your way back and play all those different characters so if i'm selling something from you know swap force or i'm selling something for a trap team or imaginators and i've got the the room and the capacity and space inside the box i'll probably drop in one of the more plentiful characters just to give them that extra thing um and they've all probably got about six or seven tree rexes at home as it is so um that's just but i i think what would you say conservatively speaking Especially the, especially you know, we'll go back to the the first series. So yeah, Skylar does the green based ones and the orange based ones. Ninety nine point nine percent are useless, like you know, in the in a, in a sense from the financial perspective, like selling them. Um, yeah, there's a, literally I can think of maybe five that are worth maybe co price comping, but generally speaking, you know, less than a yeah. dollar. 
Yeah. And then, yeah, like um, the way that eBay works is that yeah, if you've got a certain price point, it won't even let you add postage, you know, because I normally you know, do yeah. small small parcel because yeah, you can't send these as untracked letters <laughs> just by virtue of the size, right? As much as people would probably love to do that. They probably um, try, but... What's right? Like, because numerous times I've tried to put tree rex as a dollar plus post. Yeah, just to add that. Yeah, just to add that. Yeah, you know, like bundles. Yeah, you know, someone just adds a tree rex to their bundle because I, I can buy postage. You know, I'll just charge a flat rate of ten dollars, yeah. whatever the small parcel is, um, and take as many skylines as you want for ten bucks. Yeah, you because know, really, yeah. they care. I just want to get rid of them. Um, but eBay won't let me list it, my beloved tree rex for a dollar plus post. <laughs> it's, yeah. Even eBay doesn't want them. Um, so that's something you need to be well, mindful I've of. Seen I've seen sellers try and do them as variants with the multi-buyer options of that. I haven't tried that mm. personally. I have you? I've tried the, the variation listings and it crashed and burned. I, I think mm. um, I, I was doing quite well. I don't know if it's, you know, in conjunction with the, the Skyland crash, I suppose, what we found in Australia, because they're quite, um, you know, like I said, referring back to the European and the US market, Skyland is a quite expensive still. Like what we see is common trash, yeah, yeah, they they salivate across, you know. So if you can get them across there in bulk to even yeah. you know, to someone like Sarah that can sell them on, you know, you could probably make a pretty penny from that way. So if you if you do have a constant supply, you can actually, you know, almost wholesale them to someone in the States or someone in yeah. Europe, uh, just make your money that way. Um, but what I found was that I was doing quite well with Skylanders, but then I ended all the listings, then uh, made them more variation listings, and I had nothing but problems. I, my sales yeah. stopped. Um, eBay was relisting Skylanders that I actually had sold, <laughs> so just just nightmare fuel. And I actually ended up delisting um, all the Skylander giants and all the Skylander Spire adventures, and just rebundling them up into the element bundles just to you know to clear yeah. out that that way. So, do you yeah. do you sell broken piece ones and like yeah. I suppose Only... missing limbs and stuff like that? Only if it's a bulk bundle, so like 10 plus figures, and I'll make sure that there's a photo showing that it's damaged so I don't get a message saying X was broken. Um, but mm. I wouldn't sell them individually unless it was worth a decent amount of money. But even then, I normally would just bundle it in and just say there'll be some cosmetic damage figures. Yeah, because like I think we said previously, it's, I don't like selling the cosmetic pieces because, you know, being an octopus with OCD, um, I either put them in a, in a bucket, you know, to, on sell to some another reseller if that's what they're after, you know, obviously, like, you know, Sarah might want them and I'll just give them to her, you know, here, here's a bucket of them, take them. Um, or alternatively, that, yeah, that's right. Like, or um, alternatively, that, yeah, like we said earlier, where I put my beloved tree rex in the box, I might just put one with a broken arm and all those different things. But I have been yeah. caught out before is that, you know, I have sold a lot of 10, um, and I'll probably just say, you know, 700 grams. So I've put some, you know, some broken ones in there just to pad it up to a kilo, Big just to make it cost effective for the buyer. And I had yeah. nothing about complaints. Like, you know, these Skylanders are That's broken. Crazy. It's like, they're free. Wow. <laughs> the, you know, that wow. if you're yeah, like, no, yeah, and, and, and I'm not, I'm not talking about them completely trashed, but yeah, you know, like they might be missing, you know, like they might be a holding like a, a, a weapon or they might be holding, yeah, you know, one of its little ears might be missing. So very minor cosmetic yeah, damage. Wow. And, you know, like, yeah, it's something that, you know, that little Johnny would, you know, in essence, have a free character to play with, you know, all those different things. And, That's crazy. You know, and they were, they were external to the bag. So, yeah, you, know, you, you had your, your bulk lot bundle, which you, you, yeah. you paid for. And the, the ones that were put into a little bag just I'm to say, oh, about thank you. Yeah, thank you for your purchase. Yeah, here's some freebies. And, yeah, they had, I wouldn't say the audacity wow. to whinge, but, <laughs> but <laughs> it's kind of like that's more aligned the the sense that, if they're like if they look like they're chewed up by yeah like a toddler or you know a dog or something like that, I'll, I'll just throw them straight out um or i'll even use them to test bases or test portals and all yeah. those things i've never had an issue with a portal though but you know like i said no. that um, I'll, I'll test them with those you know maybe just use it as a generic testing character or something like that yeah, but, fair enough. um but yeah, like no, like like I said, just because of that you know bad taste in my mouth, I just I just put no, them aside. Fair. And yeah, if, if someone wants, yeah, like I said, if if I come across someone that said, oh hey, look, my kid plays with Skylanders, well here's a bundle of you know misfigured ones, and they'll probably whinge at me too for free. <laughs> but That's crazy, but, yeah, and I've never had an issue. Yeah, like like I said, it's happened twice. I just thought the first person was yeah you know, maybe just a little bit off their rocker, and yeah, you know, a couple of times later is that yeah you know, they've come back and said, well yeah, their Skylanders are broken. It's like. You could, I actually took a second. I took a second guess, thinking that, yeah, you know, one of the ones in the bundle must have broken in the post. All these different things, yeah. and when she held up the one that was in question, 
just you know shook my my gigantic oversized novelty head and you know just said oh, well what do you expect <laughs> in, f- in future i won't do it so um yeah, and i suppose if you are sourcing skylanders and i want to make this point is that zoom in on the photos and inspect them while you're there just don't hand over the cash yes. because the amount of times i've made a purchase on the basis of one or two characters and it's a lot of yes. money like um yeah, like we were saying, is that oh, I could spend up to three hundred dollars for maybe twenty Skylanders, um, because knowing they're probably you know, anywhere between the sixty to a hundred dollar range, and I get there and they're missing arms or they're missing weapons or yeah, they're broken or, or missing completely. I've been stitched up yeah. a few times and pulled them up on it. Yeah, because I, I know like. You- yeah, we reached that when John the reseller came on it on the show a couple of months ago. We were, we were actually talking about Skylanders off the air, and he said he, he was looking at buying a, a bundle because there's an infamous Skylander imaginator called Robo. Um, we would just say that's about five hundred dollars Australian to, to buy easily. Yeah, yeah. So John John was saying that you know he teed up to buy this yeah you know, this Skylander a lot when it arrived to him. This this character, the, the, the reason why he bought it for wasn't there, and apparently they, they noticed it was worth more money, so they left it out of the bundle. Yeah. So I can't remember what happened with that, but. Yeah, if John's watching the video, please put it in the comments below, John, mm. just to let me know what, <laughs> what happened. But yeah. that that's something you need to be very that mindful happens. of is that, yeah, because like I said that, you know, like I think I've said numerous times is that if I find a really good bundle and it's in location, I don't let it wait. I'll just go straight out and right. go get it straight away. Don't let yeah, it sit in the so. Yeah, I had a bundle recently, uh, probably a couple of months ago, and she had two yawn traps in it. And obviously she put on Facebook and we messaged within like two minutes of her listing it because I've got notifications mm. on. And she realised lots of people were messaging her about it. Yep. And then she was starting yep. to try and sell those ones on the side but still get the original asking price, price for the whole bundle. Right. Yeah. So you've got to yeah, check so, what you can do. Well, that's right. And, you know, um, you need to look at look at the figures, like look at the characters because like we are saying is the broken figures, that that's what, you know, like we we're saying, the box doesn't really particularly matter. You know, that yeah, for Pinetta, right? Like, you know, the one that I was saying that I like that, yeah, you know, Pinetta, pin, Pinata, Pinata. <laughs> Pinata, but he's a Pinata. Um, but yeah, like I had him in box and I had him out of box, and it was only like ten dollars difference. So yeah, it's not, not like much. we're not talking ludicrous amounts of money for it. So there's no, and I, I think a lot of people fall into that box culture, especially if they're selling on Facebook Marketplace, is that, oh, this is in box, you know, uh, I want $400 for it, and the box yeah. is smashed up. So you would actually yeah. take it out of the box anyway. Yeah. But they become more and more rare. I haven't actually seen Skylanders in box for the last year or so. You know, year it's plus. been a while, yeah. Um, so, but like I said, don't don't take that away from, you know, from the value of the lot. But like I'm saying is that, yeah, and what Sarah was saying as well is that have a look when you get there. Actually, look at the figures. Um, yeah, if they're being played by little kids, yeah, that's something else to be taken into consideration before you yeah, make an offer and all those different things because you know, kids could be like slamming them, smashing them. You know, you don't, don't know what they're doing with them. Um, whereas, yeah. whereas it was an adult collector or something like that, they probably one from a better better standing from those. But but going back to that um, that story I was saying a bit earlier about that six tubs for two hundred dollars. I opened the tubs and all I could smell was brand new plastic and they were not used at all. I actually put them on the portals and they were level zero or level one or whatever it was from there. Oh, so I actually, cool. they were pristine. Like, I've never come across Skylanders like that. Oh, <laughs> and, like, um, and like I say, it, they were fantastic. And I got I, I got top dollar for those because they were just yeah. like pretty much brand new out of packet and all those different things just because they had no paint chips and they had yeah, that brand awesome. new plastic smell. Um, but yeah, but I suppose, but you know, going back to that, and that's the biggest thing that's tripped me up is that yeah, you've got around to go, you know, like you, you're speaking to someone on which you think's quite above board and then you get there and you pick up, you pay your money, you get in your car and you look at the skylines and they've got pieces missing or, you know, they've got your little spines on their backs being ripped out and stuff all like that. So. And that's also, I, I don't know if it's on iPhones, but the, the advantage of those NFC tools, um, I can scan them right there and then to make sure that the chip is working and they haven't damaged the internals in them as well, if it's worth yeah. a decent amount of money. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to look into that because I've never tried it from an iPhone perspective because I use an iPhone. Um, yeah. But yeah, well, that's something to do from the Samsung. But but like I'm saying is that generally if it's cheap enough, I probably wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, like I'm saying, if you, you get yeah. the rare occurrence where you got $30 and you probably got like $500. Yeah, then you just take it. Like, yeah. I'll just take it and run and go. But, yeah. but like I said, when you're doing your, your high-level negotiations, when you're spending three, four hundred dollars over you know, maybe yeah. 20 or 30 characters, that's where you want to to work out what the what the history of the characters are um and also because, when you're yeah. buying portals 
um, in those bundles. I actually check that the USB plug's intact because I've been stung with that before as well. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I Especially with the trap point, team right. portals. Yeah. So the trap team portals and that one that I held up before, the blue one, which I've got here. There's also the white clear one. I don't have any at the moment. Yeah. So, so the, the white version here, of those, the white yeah, version so actually the, has a speaker in them. Yeah. That one so this one. The, well, that's right. So this one and the, and the other one are worth the, probably the bigger money because by virtue of that little, that little diamond shape up the top, which yeah clicks into one of the traps, um, they're probably oh, – I sell these for $10 plus post. They're, they're not ludicrous amounts of money, but like I was saying is that you could probably just you know, buy one of these cheap and use it to reset your crystals if you want. But um, they go fairly quick, like especially the normal traps. Um, what, I, what I do want to bring attention to is that what I almost forgot, Sarah, is that portals are actually locked. So you've got your portals that are locked to the Xbox 360 and you've yeah. got portals that are locked to the Xbox One. Um, yeah. That one I just showed you then is a generic portal. So it'll actually play on the, you know, the PlayStation or the Wii or pretty much every other console that has it on as well. Yeah, right? so and the computer on the well. label underneath, it will tell you if it's locked or not to what console. Yeah, because it'll say Portal of Power for Microsoft Xbox 360 or for Xbox One. Yeah. Um, the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One aren't interchangeable. So basically you're locked in that system. So I do find that the Microsoft Xbox One portals go for a little bit more money. So if I do yeah. pick up one of those, um, I will mark that up. The generic ones, I'll probably well, list in the 15 to 20 little range. Um, yeah. But the Xbox ones, I'll, I'll mark up. Because what happens is that, what, what we'll allude to a little bit later before we wrap it up, is that some of the games are worth a lot more than others. Um, the Xbox One are quite rare in the sense of the portals because I'll probably come across probably every 50 portals are probably a place, to, oh, sorry, an Xbox One or Xbox 360 game because by virtue of people playing it on the on the Wii and the PlayStation. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if someone breaks their portal or their portal starts working, they have to get an eBay to replace it because to buy the, the bundle is quite ludicrous from yeah. that perspective. So, um, but if I was looking into getting into Skyland, you know, from a kid's perspective, um, probably your PlayStation, I suppose, would be the best way of going, or the or the Wii, um, just by virtue the of the, the price. is affordable. Yeah, like the when you get the PlayStation Four versions get really expensive, and the PlayStation Four does work in the PS Five as well. Yeah, so Sarah and I were talking a bit through the week as well. So I came across that like, this is this is what I was saying about checking the stuff before you leave. Is that I actually bought a PlayStation Three bundle because they had some Skylanders in there and a, and a copy of PlayStation Four Trap Team. Um, yeah. yeah, which would go for about eighty to one hundred and. $50 going off sold comps from it. It's by itself. Yep. I paid, I think it was about $150 for it. So the basis of this whole purchase was because of, you know, the trap team and I could pull out everything else out and make a lot of money. Um, I was speaking to the gentleman. Yeah, you know, he sent quite reasonable, got to his house, you know, quite a nice looking house. So no, you know, like not saying anything about socioeconomic areas, but, you know, you always have that subconscious bias, <laughs> subconscious yeah. bias that if you rock up to a mansion and you think, oh, this is going to be all right, uh, got home, the disc was completely scratched. Like, and it's very hard. Yeah, you know, if you got a Blu ray disc, you could probably imagine how hard it is to scratch. It's yeah. been scratched by razors really and all those different hard. things. Um, and it was just completely a loss. So I ended up, you know, bundling that game up and another one, sell, selling it, at, you know, not working because it wouldn't install until yeah. PlayStation 5. Uh, I think I got about $100 from it from memory just to blow it out. So I've made a loss on that sale because by virtue that. Uh, I didn't do my due diligence. Um, yeah, like I was saying before, it happens to everything. Even, you know, like I said, yeah. I bought millions and millions and millions of Skylanders. Um, I still get trapped up. So Yeah, it's easy to do. Unfortunately so. But, yeah, like I was saying, that, and what Sarah was saying as well, if, if your kids are looking into getting into Skylanders, probably buy a cheap Wii, Wii U, or a PlayStation 3. It would probably be the most economical way to get into Skylanders. Yeah. Um, and especially if you want to test it, like, yeah, like if you have a Samsung phone, um, test them that way. But if you actually want to play around a little bit, just play on PlayStation 3 because I think, yeah, you know, Trap Team or those later games that you probably want to look at is probably about maybe what 15, 20 bucks per disc. Yeah, I can pick them up damage. like cash converters for like $5 a disc. So, mm. yeah, just check that they're not scratched to the death. That's right. Because, you know, like your Wii, um, Wii and well, I suppose we'll just say Wii because they're not on the PlayStation 2. Those discs are kind of, you can resurface them to a degree because they're not Blu ray yeah. discs. But yeah, when PS4. you're looking at Wii U, PS4, PS3, um, Xbox One, all those different things, they're Blu ray discs. And as soon as they're scratched, they're screwed. So you can't you can't repair them. 
um, which is why I was quite annoyed at <laughs> this hundred dollar game, which was basically worthless. Um, so, but like I'm saying, is that you know, buy a PlayStation Three, you know, pick up you know some cheap games and you know build the characters from that way if you want to go from that perspective, and especially if you want to test them. That because you know, like we we're saying, is that you know, if you're looking at testing on a PlayStation Four or a PlayStation Five console, it becomes very, very hard to get into that market from that perspective from that price point. Yeah, unless you like, like you're saying, is unless you you know, fall across yeah you know, a game on on um on Facebook Marketplace or in the thrift store that it is quite cheap, you know, if you pick it up for five dollars. And I have done that before. I picked up Swap Force for like two dollars at the local you know shop for, for PlayStation 4 and sold it for $120 to Canada. Yeah. Um so these, yeah, you know, like I said, they're still out there, but they're becoming increasingly, increasingly rare because people become more attuned to it. But like yeah. we were talking about before, is that Skylanders are quite crap <laughs> in like return on investment. So it's only those really select characters you want to do, and very select. Yeah, you, you probably like. Would you would you suggest people get into the the toy to life category if they're looking at starting a new category? Or it's not sustainable. Um, no. If you started a couple of years ago, sure, but it, even I'm teetering off it now because this, the returns aren't there anymore. And being no. yeah, money caught up for a while to wait for that one particular person whose kids decided to get into it. Yeah, it, it can hold up your cash for quite a while. Yeah, and, it, and it's something that, you know, like I suppose like we're talking about is that, you know, Sarah and I are quite attuned to to Skylanders and that's why I asked Sarah to come on to this episode for us that we know what we're looking for. So, yeah, we quite quickly just look through the photos and you can tell straight away that's $5, that's $10, that's $15 yeah, exactly. and you can work it out quickly and, you know, all those different yeah. things. Um if you're quite new to it, I wouldn't be adverse against you, you know, jumping into, you know, testing your tentacles into the into the water of Skylanders. But you want to make sure you get cheap bundles. And like I was saying, that yeah. if you don't know, you don't want to be paying more than five or ten cents a character because that's it's that's a lot of training. research to find the ones that are worth the money. If you're willing to put the time in, go for it. But things that I thought were worth money a couple of weeks ago, I've looked up now, and they're not they've tanked. So that's right. The market and, and, is uh, constantly changing. It happens so quickly, like, you know, like literally that, you know, and what, you know, Sarah and I delve in, you know, we, we deal in, you know, multiple Skylanders and where we were listing them individually, right, where you yeah. would list them for maybe $15, $20, and you're thinking, oh, hang on, yeah. this character used to sell really quick on the same day that you do it, and then you go check the price and it's down to $8 mm-hmm. as opposed to 30 or something yeah. like that. So it, it kind of like bottoms out very quickly. But, yeah, if you yeah. go to a garage sale and you find – yeah, a tub of Skylanders, like maybe four or five hundred, yeah, you know, Skylanders for twenty dollars. Definitely grab it and you know, yeah, go from yeah, that yeah, perspective. Because sure. you know, you could sell it on to someone like Sarah, or you could, you know, just say, "Hey, I've got a photo. You know, are you interested?" And then, you know, yeah, I, I would go back with a reasonable offer. Like, I'm not, I'm not tight on those different things. I'm willing to pay up. Like, I'm not too sure yeah. how Sarah works, but bundles are good. Yeah, bundles are good. Yeah, like, like I said, if I if I say, a, you know, one of those yawn traps to go for three hundred dollars, I probably would offer you, yeah. Two hundred dollars for the bundle because I can yep. make money on that. All those different yep. things. You may have only paid five dollars at the op shop or the thrift store. I'll offer you two hundred yep. bucks because I know full yep. well that what I can make money. Yeah. Um, so it might be from that perspective as well. But definitely, definitely, I think we'll wrap it up. But what we'll do is we'll flick this website up again. Have a look at this website just to see what's on there. Um, yeah. Because that'll give you an idea of what the characters are. So you can actually go in there. But what you will find now is that a lot of Skylanders on eBay. Like they're either selling in bundles like Sarah and I were talking about or they're selling in multi-variation listings. Yeah. That becomes really cumbersome when you try to comp them out because, you know, if you type in Bouncer, for example, which is one of the characters I just showed up on the screen then, um, that one's always bundled, bundled up. It's probably like a dollar figure by himself. Um, yeah. Or, you know, it's a multi-variation listing. And when you actually go to sold, it's really hard to nut down the price of those different you figures. Can't find it, but yeah. no. Um, but yeah, and that's but, another thing. Just because you can't find it on eBay doesn't make it rare. It means it's not worth anything right. listing it by itself. Yeah, I've had right. someone try to sell me a stump smash telling me it was rare from Spyro's <laughs> $20 for the one figure. I'm like, yeah, no. Yeah. So I know. I, I've spoken to it. Yeah, and no, I've spoken to you know, my beloved alter ego down in Melbourne is that, yeah, and he, he sells in a, um, you know, like a, 
the vintage market, like one of those cabinets that you, you know, all those different things. So if you had access to one of those vintage cabinets or booths, I think what they're called, like from those different perspectives, mm. you could probably put your Skylanders in there, put maybe $2 each or $5 each, whatever it is. And they probably would cycle through there because it's yeah. just natural foot traffic. But it's yeah. not worth it because I don't know about Sarah, but I take about six photos per Skylander. I take them like, you know, six. four angles, four angles of, you know, all around the Skylander yep. then, then top and bottom. Yep, that's so, what I do. If you're looking at, and if I'm doing a bundle, I probably wouldn't go to that extreme because no, you know, I'm not well. taking 36 photos for mm -hmm. yeah, for 10 no, no, no. Um, yeah. But yeah, like if it's a higher class character, you know, if it's you know like one of those characters that punch, punch at $100, I'll probably take 12 photos. I'll <laughs> take photos until the yeah. cows come home with those ones. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, that if you got the foot traffic like from a booth or from a glass cabinet or something like that, people can just mm -hmm. pick them up and they probably would pay a couple of bucks. So it would be worth you know, getting from that perspective. Yeah, at markets and that, you can definitely sell them up because kids just think they look cool. And I think that's yeah. the appeal for Disney Infinity because all the figures are familiar to them, so you can sell them mm. as statues. But when you're selling them on eBay to people that know what they're looking for, you can't get the same price. No, that's right. So, yeah, like, that, that's something I didn't even think of either. You know, maybe if you're in you know, in the market space, you could probably you know, get them for 15 cents each and you know, maybe charge three, four, five. Yeah, I'd I normally see them at my rest. local markets. I'm trying to sell them like $4 a figure. Which would yeah. be the dream if you could get that on eBay. But well, that's right. Know. Well, that's right. And that, that's well, yeah. You know, I know you still have to pay your market fees and all those different things. But yeah, yeah. if you sell maybe ten or fifteen Skylanders, you're home and host. <laughs> you yeah, just exactly. do all those different yeah. things. But but yeah, but like I'm saying, is that I, I kind of want to do more of these episodes, which are focusing on you know collectors or I suppose people in their niches that know the stuff back to front, uh, without having the paywall of a, a Discord because. Um, yeah, you know, like it, it's just an easy because not everyone wants to use Discord or they don't want to use Facebook groups and all those different things. So yeah. I want to kind of you know, bring these little these little chats together with yeah you know, people who are actually you know impassioned with the products that they're selling and all those different things. But, but th thank you, Sarah, for for popping on. And um, I think you are in Grumpy Granny's Discord. Well, I, I know, am. You know, yeah, I've had chats with you before. But yeah, if yeah. you if that way inclined, and you as much as I just said to the contrary, but if you do want to jo join a Discord that uh, Sarah and I are in Grumpy Granny. Uh, she's my podcast offsider um and we have a little skylight tab as well so you're more than welcome to yeah. you know jump in there and ask yourself a question or sarah might answer your question as well um yeah because like i said we're, we're always happy to help people and all those different things just just don't send me a photo with four thousand skylanders and tell you which ones are worth it which <laughs> i've ones had that happen money? numerous no. times i've had that yeah. happen before and it's like i've actually taken the time you know probably 30 40 minutes of zooming in with my tentacles and circling the ones yeah that are worth it. Then i've had that a few like times it, so. on instagram and then I've, I've sent it back saying, hey, Sarah, here, well, not Sarah, I'll just use it as an example. Um, it's going to sound horrible. But, yeah, he, you know, these are the ones that are worth it. Then they like there's no thank you or no nothing. You just see that they've read just it. Peace then out. They just disappear. They, they just they, yeah. they disappear. And it's like, oh, no worries. Thanks for that. <laughs> like, just, <laughs> yeah, I said the I last Because uh, yeah, I actually uh, I quite enjoy it because, like like Sarah was saying before, it's, it's a thrill of the hunt. Yeah, like, I do get Absolutely. excited for other people. It's like, oh, my God, I haven't seen that figure. Yeah, you know, these yeah. are the ones that I know for fact will go for money. And like, yeah, they'll just disappear. Absolutely. With <laughs> no, no, not yeah, not not that I expect anything in particular, but just like say, like, yeah, thanks for you know spending the last hour helping me make three. Yeah, researching for me. Yeah, that's, yeah. Well, that's right. Yeah. well that, that like, that's what it comes down to, isn't it? So you've pretty much cherry picked out the ones that are worth it. They'll just bundle the rest and make money off that as well. So, yeah. but anyway, but um, but thank you for coming on and um, no parting your knowledge with us. But um, uh, it's. Great to finally meet you and uh, see your okay. your budding warehouse behind you. Or is it a shed? I can't work uh, it out. It's it's a mixture of both, I guess. Oh, that's good. Are you in a warehouse? Not today. Are you, are you in a warehouse, or you were in a warehouse at one point? Or? It's it's a shed. I've moved multiple times now, but I've got the size of a warehouse, but still in a storage shed area. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah, I'm with the big boys no, now. Well, that's right. Yeah, well, that's right. You're all tech and sports, look out! Here you come. But. Um, <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but thank go. you very much, and <laughs> thank we'll, you. we'll get there after we stop recording. <laughs> 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 All right, bye. Oh, hang on, we press.